so I do have your uh, second law calculation papers graded. Um, they are in grade book. I have a handful of people who are absent, so I'm waiting for those to get um, turned in, and then I'll get your papers returned to you. You guys did great. Exactly what I was expecting. You actually did really, really good with the units. Um, everything, like, I saw no issues. So that's going to make this next part even easier because we're going to look at kind of a specific version of our second law equation, okay? So we know that the second law is force equals mass times acceleration, right? And so um, we're going to take that force and make it specific, and we're going to take that acceleration and make it specific. And so that's what today's stuff is pretty much about. So we've all heard of the force of gravity. We may not necessarily think of it as a force. You just think, hey, it's gravity, right? Um, but technically, it is a force. It's one of those forces that is a non-contact force. It kind of works invisibly. We can see the effects of it, but we can't really see like the, the pushing down or the pulling down, but we see the effects of it, right? Um, and so we know that gravity is a force that's gonna pull objects towards each other. Obviously, things are gonna be gravitating towards the more massive object, which is why we are attracted to the planet Earth because Earth is extremely massive and we are extremely not massive compared, you know, in comparison to the Earth. Um, that is another reason why all of the planets are being pulled to the sun, because in relation to the sun, um, the planets are just tiny little specks, right? So the sun is the massive object in our universe. Um, so whatever is the most massive object, that's what's exerting the greatest pull, right? Um, but in general, it's just that force that's pulling objects towards each other. And so since gravity is a force, by default, it has to follow Newton's second law, right? Or else Newton's law wouldn't work, and it wouldn't be a law because it has to work all the time in every situation, and it does. So if Newton's second law is force equals mass times acceleration, and we just said that gravity is a force, we could look at this force as gravity. And we also know that objects here on Earth are gonna fall at the same velocity they're gonna accelerate at the same rate. So we can substitute this generic acceleration for a more specific acceleration of the acceleration of gravity here on Earth, which has a set value. It is um, 10 meters per second squared. Again, the units match what they need to be for um, our force equation, so that's good. And so sometimes you'll hear gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared. Um, my first year teaching, there actually was a physical science state test. I think I told you about it. It was awful. So I was really relieved when the state of Ohio realized that their test was a little bit ridiculous. Um, and so they only gave it that one year. And they had on their reference sheet to use 10 instead of 9.8. So I kind of follow that. Um, 10 is a nice, easy number to deal with, but because the state, you know, kind of went to 10 instead of 9.8, that's why I've gone with 10. But a lot of times you will hear it as 9.8. That's a pretty common number, kind of like pi 3.14, right? Um, don't get me into the 50 digits that you can get to, right, Anthony? <laughs> um, so it, it's one of those numbers that you might already just automatically recognize as 9.8. Um, but because the state of Ohio said 10 was good, we're going to just round it up to 10 also. So whenever we're using the acceleration that's gravity, it's going to be 10 meters per second squared. So this A means acceleration. This little subscript G means the acceleration caused by gravity. So we have an acceleration that's caused by gravity, which is always going to be 10. Our force is now going to be gravity. And so we're, we're looking at a specific version of the same equation. So it's gonna be, you guys did great with the, the normal equation. Um, sometimes it's just the wording of the questions that make the, the next equation a little bit trickier, but it's still the exact same process and concept, okay? Um, so uh, if we would translate our gravity into US customary, it's 32 feet per second squared, Again, in science, we're not gonna really use that, but that might give you a more general understanding of, of what that pool might kind of look like. All right, so we've kind of talked about this. Um, we know that 
air resistance has a huge effect. Gravity itself is not what's changing. It's the shape of the object and how much air resistance it's, it, it's being able to, to attract or use. So, you know, most people think that the more massive object, like in that video, the um, watermelon, would land first because it has more mass, it's being pulled more um, intensely to the ground. But we know that that's not true. We know that if, if air resistance is not a factor, so the size or the shape doesn't influence air resistance, then different mass objects should still land at the same rate, right? It's air resistance that would make them appear a little bit different. And so if we go back and look here, right, um, air resistance is going to slow down that fall, right? Which is in, a, in the example of a skydiver is a really good thing, right? And it was Galileo Galilei that um, discovered this. Okay, so we looked at these videos and kind of showed that with the, the space station in, in Cleveland where they took all the air out of the room and that bowling ball feather fell at the exact same rate. Obviously the masses are very different, but it's air resistance that causes that change or that difference. It's not the weight or, excuse me, the, the mass of the object, right? Gravity is not changing. It's just the air resistance. So. Um, we're going to watch um, sometime here pretty soon, there's a Mythbuster on terminal velocity. And terminal velocity is the greatest velocity that an object can reach before it balances and you don't get any more acceleration. So we looked at this with that, um, um, the parachute skydiving um, little simulation. Um, when the arrows were unequal, you saw that acceleration still happening. And then when the arrows equal out, um, you're still showing the object falling, but it's doing it at a constant rate. Right? So there is a maximum or highest velocity that an object will reach before it reaches that equilibrium and that balance. And remember, if forces are balanced in opposite directions, you're not going to get a change in motion. You can still have motion but you're not going to have that acceleration or that change in motion anymore, right? And so we'll, I'll, at the end of class today, we'll watch a video on terminal velocity, but we do have a Mythbuster that will um, look at this. Um, they test to see if a penny thrown from, I think it is, um, is it the Sears Tower maybe? Sears building in Chicago? I can't remember. They throw it from um, uh, one of the highest skyscrapers and they, they measure to see because there's mist that a penny dropped from that height can kill a person on the ground if it hits them. So we'll watch that to kind of see. Uh, at the end of the, at the end of class, we'll watch this terminal velocity video though. But one more thing, the force of gravity is also known as weight. And this is where, if you remember back from eighth grade science, so weight the definition is that it's the force of gravity that's pulling on an object's mass. So technically, weight is a force because it's the force of gravity. All right. So remember how we said that the word weight has a G in it and the word gravity has a G in it? Weight is going to be the one that's affected by gravitational pull. So if gravity would change, like if you would go to the moon or if you would go to a different planet, you're going to have um, weight can be adjusted. Mass is still going to stay the same because mass is the amount of matter that makes something up. So if you have the same mass everywhere, right, that's not going to change because it's not affected by gravity. But if you could change the gravitational pull by being on a different planet or being in outer space, then your weight could actually change because weight is affected by the pull of gravity. They both have G's. Weight is the one that is affected by gravity. Okay. So, thinking of our forces, weight technically is a force as well because it's the pull of gravity on an object, and we just said that gravity is a force. So, technically, weight <clears throat> has an equation. It's going to be, this is our force, this is our mass, times our acceleration. So, if we substitute force for weight and acceleration for gravity, weight equals mass times the acceleration due to gravity. So, that's our new equation. Right? It works the exact same way as our force equals mass times acceleration. It's just the specific version of it. Right? So weight is a specific force. 
this acceleration is a specific form, and that's the form, the acceleration that's caused by gravity. Okay, so we automatically know that the acceleration is going to be 10. So that's going to be given. So sometimes it's going to seem like in the practice problems, um, there might not be enough information. But by default, if we're talking weight and we're here on Earth, then we know the acceleration. If for some reason the weight would, or the acceleration would be something different, like you're in a simulation or you're on another planet or on the moon, then that acceleration would have to be given to you. But if the acceleration is not given, then you can just assume it's 10. Okay? <clears throat> so, weight is really going to be mass times our acceleration of gravity, which is 10. So it's just a matter of remembering and putting together the idea that weight is our force and this acceleration is our gravity. Okay. There is a, we'll also talk about this, there's a direct conversion um, factor where one newton is equal to 0.22 pounds. And we'll use that here in a little bit um, so that you can kind of have a more you know, everyday understanding, like a Newton, nobody really knows, like, I know that we don't use the Newton, and so it's, it's something that, like, we're like, well, how much does that really weigh? What is a Newton? And so it's 0.22 of a pound, okay? Um, so <clears throat> here's an astronaut on Earth, and his mass, or her mass, is 120 kilograms, but the weight is going to be that 120 kilograms, or the mass, times 10, because that's the acceleration of gravity on Earth. So you'll have 120 times 10. So really, the, the force of that astronaut's weight is 120 newtons worth of force that he or she is being pulled down to the Earth. Okay. Um, on the moon, um, the, the acceleration of gravity is much less. It's actually like 0.6. And so um, when you take that acceleration and times it by the mass, you end up with 200 newtons. So that since it's on the moon and we know that there's a different gravity there, you use that acceleration due to gravity and then you end up with the 200 newtons. So we'll come back to these videos here in a minute. Um, <clears throat> so here's the equation. Um, and Cheyenne, this is the paper I gave you, okay? Um, so the new equation is weight equals mass times gravity, or W equals M times G. We do have a triangle. Again, this line is like division. It's like our fraction line, and you guys were great with that. Going across is multiplication. And so weight is going to be, obviously, a capital W. Force of gravity, these are basically the same thing, because weight is the force of gravity. So sometimes you might see the equation f of g equals m times g, okay? So these are some of the abbreviations that you might see, and they can just be substituted in because they really mean the same thing. It's just a more specific way or another way of saying the same variable. So weight or force of gravity um, could be in here, right? Obviously, gravity is going to be the acceleration. And sometimes we'll put a capital A for acceleration due to gravity. And so if we do that, we could get this equation. Force of gravity equals mass times acceleration due to gravity. When really we know this is weight, and really we know this is gravity, which matches up here. So really there's two equations um, that mean the same thing. They just can be represented both ways. It's, I know it's a little confusing. It's aggravating. I wish that, you know, sometimes in science we're a little schizophrenic and we have multiple ways of saying or doing the same thing. Um, this is one of those, all right? So I just, you'll see it both ways, and so I don't want you to be like, well, what in the world is f of g? We never had that equation, right? Um, so this is kind of a, a simpler one. This is even a more specific. The force of gravity is weight, mass is always mass, and then this gravity is our acceleration due to gravity. Yes? So Newton's because Isaac Newton got hit in the head by an apple causing a concussion. Well, I don't know if it caused a concussion, but... Randomly allowing him to see a formula that never existed before. He did create it. You are correct. All right, so weight is measured in newtons, and again, it's going to be a kilogram times a meter per second squared, which still matches our equation, right? It's still a kilogram here, 
this is still a meter per second squared. So it's still the Newton because it's a force and we measure force with the Newton. All right, mass is still gonna be kilograms and our gravity constant here on Earth is 10 meters per second squared. There are a couple questions where, like I say, you're in a simulation or if the acceleration on Mars was you know, such and such. Obviously, you're gonna use whatever acceleration. If I would give you, like you're on a different planet, you use that acceleration. You can't use 10 unless you're here on Earth, okay? But typically, that's not gonna be given to you. You're gonna have to just assume you're on Earth, and so that is your acceleration. So on Earth, acceleration will always be 10 meters per second squared. Okay, so a lot of times the problem is not gonna come right out and say that, though. All right, so given the following information, we're gonna find the weight of the average American male. So according to the National Center for Health Statistics, the average mass of an adult male is 86 kilograms. We're gonna determine the weight of an 86 kilogram man on the Earth and on the moon where the gravitational constant is one sixth that of the Earth. Right? So on the Earth, his mass is 86 kilograms. We also know on Earth that gravity accelerates at a rate of 10 meters per second squared. And so we are going to set this up where weight, which is also a force of gravity, is equal to mass times our gravity. So all we have to do is take our mass and times it by our gravity. So 86 kilograms times 10, 860 newtons. Now, if we wanna know what this man's actual weight is in pounds, because 860 newtons, we don't know what that means. Like I have no idea, like I don't have a reference for that. So if we convert that to pounds, it's 189.2 pounds. Apparently that is the, the weight of the average American male. Now the mass is 86, but the weight is 189.2. And again, weight is the one that's affected by gravity, which is why you have to multiply it by the acceleration caused by gravity. <clears throat> On the moon, we're gonna use the same equation to find his weight, same mass, right? Here's the acceleration um, of objects on the moon, which is one-sixth what it is here on Earth. So we're gonna take the acceleration of 1.63 instead of 10 because we're on the moon. And that is 140.2 newtons. In pounds, it is 30.8 pounds. So has that person lost a lot of weight all of a sudden? If they're on Earth and they go up to the moon and they're 30 pounds? Technically, their weight has changed, but has their mass, is what makes that person up, changed? No. Does anybody remember from last year? I said there's probably only two situations that I can remember, or that I can think of, where a person's weight would drastically change on Earth. Weight could change if you go to a different planet, just like that. 189 to 30.8. What were the two examples that I said a person's weight excuse me, a person's mass here on Earth could change. Emily, give me one. Yeah, so like Mrs. Tackett and Mrs. House just had their babies, right? So they went from having the mass of basically two people, right? And then as soon as they delivered their children or their child, I guess, just like that, their mass was back to themselves. Mass changed just like that. What was the other one? Not such a happy example. Yeah, like an amputation, right? So all of a sudden you have both arms, you get in a bad accident and an arm gets has to be amputated. Obviously that mass is no longer with you, right? So really those are the only two examples that I can think of and nobody's ever been able to come up with another one um, in all these years we've been doing it. But those are the two where your mass would change just like that. Otherwise, you know, you can go on a diet but really, you're not, going, you're not losing weight, you are losing mass. And it's a slower process. Like some people are like, well, I can lose five pounds in a day. Well, sure, but a lot of that's just gonna be water weight. You know, like you weigh something different than you do in the morning than you do at night, right, after eating and drinking all day. 
Um, so really, we use the word weight incorrectly a lot. We say we're, we have to go weigh in for a wrestling tournament. Not really. You're not changing, seeing how gravity's changed. You're seeing how the mass that has made you up has changed, right? Um, we say you're going to go on a diet and lose weight, or maybe you're trying to gain weight, um, like because you're, you're working out for a certain sport or something, and you're trying to bulk up. Um, so we use the word incorrectly, so then it just makes it a little harder in our science world. Um, but hopefully that all kind of sounds familiar from last year where we made a big deal where mass and weight are not the same. And we have a really good song, one of my favorites of the year today. Um, and weight is going to be affected by gravity. So if gravity changes, then the weight changes just like that, like we see here. And then your mass isn't going to change unless something drastic, like you deliver a baby, you have something amputated, or something like that. Otherwise, mass is going to stay constant. Um, so if the same astronaut stands on the Earth and the Moon, is their weight going to be different? So I'm asking about weight. I see some yeses. Different gravity, right? So if there's different gravity, then they're going to have different weight. So the mass will have to stay the same because the amount making up, like I don't see like this astronaut gave birth, I see, don't see any amputations. So the mass is going to be the same, but the weight would change based on the, the pull of gravity. The reasoning is because the moon actually has less mass than the Earth, and so it has less gravity than the Earth, meaning that it's going to cause objects to weigh less on the moon because it has less gravitational pull. <clears throat> and again, this is all topics that we talked about last year. The word weight has a G in it. The word gravity has a G in it. They're related. Weight is affected by gravity where mass is not. Just like that 86 kilogram man was 86 kilograms on Earth and on the moon. Did not matter where he was. Okay, let's go back. We have some videos to end today.